Today, we're going to be adding a modular engine to the ultimate fishing boat. Let's get started. So as you guys know, most fishing boats in real life do have engines, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So back here, we just filled it with weight blocks to basically act like the weight of the engine, even though the engine isn't here. But that's what we're going to be building today. So we're going to build a pretty beefy engine on this thing. So let's type in modular right here, and we're going to build a three by three engine. So let's grab our crankshaft because that's the most important step here. Then we're going to place, um, I think, three or four of these actual crankshaft. I think we're just going to do three. We definitely only have enough room for three, and then we're going to grab ourselves some three by three cylinders and we'll place them just like that right next to each other and then we need like an engine belt to actually spin this thing up when we start it so we'll put that there and then we need the clutch on this side so we need to grab a pretty large clutch here um let's grab a three by three clutch and this will do the rps and then we need a transmission and then this will lead straight down to the propeller which i forgot is actually behind that okay that's gonna be interesting and of course we can't forget about cooling so let's get ourselves a cooling manifold and we'll put it like this i don't think it actually matters which way it goes but we're only doing cooling on one side of the engine so this is all um b right then let's grab ourselves some pipes then we're actually gonna make all these pipes gray in this thing we're just gonna make these gray for now that definitely looks better for this type of engine then what we're gonna do is grab an enclosed pipe here so this will make it look better and we're actually gonna put a dial straight in between the pipes so we'll put a dial like right in between that and that'll say our coolant pressure for each and every one of these manifolds here because we will have an engineer and i want them to be doing as much stuff as possible and basically analyzing as much stuff as possible so we're gonna have each one of these manifold things pump out the hot water into the ocean and then the right ones will suck in the cold water from the ocean and then we had to rotate this one and then are we gonna have to rotate this one i think we do so we have to click oh i think um what number is it i think it's that one perfect so now all those will be pumping out the hot water and we're gonna grab ourselves just a normal straight pipe right here and then we'll line those straight into the actual floor of the boat and then we're gonna have to actually line these up in different positions here because they're actually going to intercept so what we'll do right now is put some holes in the bottom of this thing we'll pull one right there there and there i think that should work right yep i think so and then we'll grab ourselves some ports and this is the hot side so this is where it will be pumping out all the hot water then the right side over here will be the cold water i'm pretty sure then now what we have to do is just line those pipes up with that so we have to line that all the way to that one and then line this all the way to that one and that should work out so we'll grab ourselves an enclosed pipe click k twice and there we go now it's going the right way and we'll do the same for that and then we have to do the same for this one over here and we have to make the corner wedge right there perfect so now that we have all that done we're going to line a straight pipe and then we have to stop it one block before because we actually have to um, bring it back up into the air and we're going to grab this enclosed pipe like this place it there and just like that all the hot water will be pumped out of the boat on this side so that all should work we actually have to color this because that looks absolutely terrible there we go we did some fixing now it all looks perfectly fine but now we need to actually put the out coolant so this will be the out and the hot side so we need to line all these down to this other side over here so it's actually away from the hot one so we'll just line all of them straight into the ground like that and then we're gonna make a piping system directly under the engine to bring it to the other side over here then also on that other side there will be pumps pumping it out into the ocean or actually in i don't know i forgot which one i'm doing but it actually doesn't matter when you're doing cooling there we go now that we got all those lined down i'm going to control click that pipe there to copy it and then we're going to line them all straight to the other side and we just have to do this two more times here so there we go and all of that should be done now there we go then we'll just grab ourselves a straight pipe and also line that down three times so we'll bring it straight to the end right there um we'll delete that end pipe probably and there we go so now we have those pipes going under the engine and we're going to delete the three front ones right there and grab ourselves some even more pumps and then we just have to place it like that am i right yep we are so pump it all out then we're gonna want pump out connecting to that pipe so fluid in should be on that side and there we go so that should all be connected um it actually isn't connected so we'll have to do that real quick so we'll grab a angle on this and put it three times there we go we now have our coolant pumps we'll color them all the same color over here oh i colored the wrong block there we go then we'll just line all these straight into the bottom floor right there and there we go so that should all work so what we'll have to do is the same thing on the other side so we'll delete that one right there and then we'll put three like that is that how i did it on this side um it really isn't and it should be fine it's just like a couple blocks away so then we'll line this over there so that will have to turn and same with that one so that'll turn right over there these will be three ports in a row right here so we'll grab ourselves some three ports and there we go now that we got those ports done we're gonna do the same thing we did to the other side so let's grab ourselves some enclosed pipes here and these are enclosed so nothing should leak out of them hopefully now that we have that done we just need to get some straight pipes here and line those and there we go so that is all done then we're gonna do the same thing we did to the other side once again and just line the pipes just like that and that should actually be it for cooling but of course we need to add like all the water gauges and stuff we're also going to do that so right here we are going to grab ourselves a dial and this dial will display the coolant pressure in each and every one of those so there we go that is a pretty nice setup we got going on there we'll also put some more um displays here for the coolant pump somewhere else but what we're going to do now is break a hole in each and every one of those pipes just like this and then we're going to grab a t-piece which will have the pipe kind of leak a little bit on that side 
side, but then we're going to connect something to the leaking area and it will be a pressure sensor that will detect how much um, pressure is actually going through our coolant system. So we want our coolant system to obviously have pressure because that means it is actually flowing. So we'll grab ourselves pressure sensors and there we go. And then we'll connect the pressure sensors directly to those dials on each and every one of those. So now that we have all that lined up, our coolant should be all done for this thing. Our coolant takes up so much space. That's actually insane. And we haven't even really started on the main engine here. Let's definitely get that started. And we actually forgot to build ourselves a fuel tank. This is going to be quite hard because the fuel really will lean this thing back. But we're going to see here. So we'll just put this back part here as our fuel tank. So let's grab a fluid spawner and this will spawn diesel all in here and we'll spawn it right there. Um, we actually could probably put it inside of a wall. That'd be better for fuel, but it'll be fine for now. So let's want to see how much weight this thing actually leans this thing to the back here. It actually, um, hold on a second. It really isn't that bad. Um, let's go on. Our, there is fuel in here, so it isn't really that bad at all. Maybe we need to put more fuel actually because it's not even leaning it. Well, that's actually a good sign. So now we can actually have more weight back here, which we can do. Then, of course, we can't forget air for this engine. So this engine, of course, needs air. So what we're going to do is line this up with um, modular engine manifolds, and this will just basically spread all the air to all these cylinders over here. And then we'll connect to this one right here to an air um, manifold, right? Am I right? Yep, there it is. So we need to connect this to an air intake somewhere in this thing. Where are air intakes normally add on these types of ships? I have no idea. Now we actually need a place to connect the air. So I think we're going to do something up here. So let's grab ourselves some uh, one by two wedges just like this. And we're going to line these pretty high up. Uh, we don't want symmetry on probably. We're just going to line it up like this. So this will be our exhaust and air system. So it's going to be the same thing. I don't know if I should exactly do that, but you know, why not? And then we need ourselves some blocks here. So these are the building blocks and we'll do something like that, I think. So something like that would look good for our exhaust um, manifold and our air and tanks. So we have to connect these pipes all the way up here. That's going to be like the biggest thing ever. We have to line the pipes through our entire ship. So I don't know how we're supposed to do this. But what we're going to do is grab ourselves an air filter. And this is going to filter out the air that we're going to be taking into our intake. Then we're going to grab our two um, actual um, exhaust manifolds. And we're actually going to put the air filter higher up because that'd probably be smarter if we're actually driving here. So yep, something like that will work. And then we have to basically connect these pipes to the engine and before we actually connect the air thing we're gonna make like a um kind of a turbo for this thing or supercharge it's one of the thing but we're gonna grab a impeller pump and this impeller pump will basically act as like a turbo for this thing so we're gonna do something like that then we'll connect this one back here this um rps thing so this rps also can be connected to your engine um i don't know if that's a good idea really but we're just gonna grab ourselves an electric motor because the motor will spin it also and then we'll connect that and there we go and we'll also color it because it looks much better when it's colored we need connect the fluid out from the impeller pump to the air manifold just like that and then we need to connect this straight up to our actual intake system now that i completely dug out an entire piping system for that why don't we actually fill it in with pipes and I just realized the ceiling in here is for some reason blue and the walls are brown. Um, oh, copied the entire walls brown. Okay, so I definitely did something wrong with my painting yesterday. Now we need to do the same thing for our exhaust. So we're just going to copy the same thing over here. So this will be our exhaust. And then the one on the other side will be our um, actual fuel. So that's definitely important. So exhaust is three of these and then the fuel is three also. We need to grab some straight manifolds and just line it straight across. I forgot I can't click and drag it. Okay, we have to manually do it. That's fine. Then let's grab our exhaust manifold. We're is this at exhaust manifold just like this and then it will point upwards i think yep we want it to go straight into the ceiling from here now that we have all of those connected we actually need to make ourselves a um fuel manifold and that's going to be basically the same thing that we've been doing three times here now that we got all the manifold stuff done now we need an actual fuel manifold and this will go straight down because our tank is actually located right down in this room perfect actually that'll work then we're not actually going to want our um fuel area to be touching anywhere near that so we're going to change the direction of our fuel pump so we'll have it turn right here um wrong way so we'll have it turn like that and then we'll face it down from there because we actually need to add like all the starters and stuff for this engine so we'll grab a pump and this will pump fuel into the engine so just like that i think yep that should work and then we just line this straight down into a fluid port down here and that leads straight to the engine which works out awesomely all right so now that we have all that done let's grab ourselves the ze modular engine controller it is a really good um actual engine controller for this thing we'll just put it like right here on the wall because i don't really know where we're going to put it for now but we're going to grab ourselves a throttle for the engine and we'll put it up here in the helm this is also temporarily so it's not going to permanently be here then we'll grab a key button also temporarily and then that's all we need right now so we'll grab our throttle connect it straight to this and where's our throttle and we'll connect that crankshaft rps will connect that there's a composite note on this we actually have to connect to the engine then we have an on and off value which will connect to our key button right there and then i is that it um i think it is oh fuel manifold we have to connect all this so fuel manifold 
air manifold and that is it right what's this yep i think we connected everything oh we have to connect our starter so we need to put a starter on this thing we'll put multiple different starters just because it is much better to actually help start the engine so multiple starters right there and then we're going to have two stuff on the bottom here so what kind of other stuff do we have and i guess we'll also add an alternator to our engine which will help spin it for electricity and that'll definitely work out so i think that's all we need though um i hope this thing starts and we also need to connect this key button over here to all of of these pumps over here there's so many pumps in this thing that are actually going to be needed and we have to um, actually figure out our turbo or supercharger situation here and all that should be connected just like that and then we need to connect the modular engine starter to all four of the starters and i think that should be it but before we do that we need a switch box here and the switch box will turn on this turbo thing and we'll keep that somewhere so switch signal will be connected to this um starter thing right here the key button and then when it's on we want this to be at a constant number here so we'll just put it at one for now so it'll spin at that full speed on the electric motor so when it's on it'll go to that and then the switch value will go to the electric throttle there and that should be it okay we're gonna turn on infinite electric though just for now because we don't actually have a battery in this thing i don't know if this is gonna start i really doubt it but we're gonna see here all right it's starting um did it start i don't know um it's on full throttle hold on let's turn our volume up it is starting okay it is running actually right now that is awesome i don't know how i got that built and started on the first try i've never done that before here it is the engine is running we actually need to connect it to our um, propeller though i completely forgot about that part so right now we're just making our drive terrain and we'll line it up like that and then where's the pipe at um it should be on that block there and then how do we do this so we'll line the pipe going through there oh crap that's a, oh um how are we even going to do this okay so we'll have to bring it down one block that'll oh that's not actually going to work i don't think um actually it will and then we just have to completely line it through whatever this is right here have it go down even another block delete some weight blocks that should be fine and then have it go down right here and then we'll lead it straight down to the propeller actually we can have it go down earlier so why don't we do that probably and that'll go straight to the propeller so let's go ahead and line this up with pipes and there we go it's all connected with pipes now we need a throttle for our clutch this will not be permanent so um, we're have we're gonna have like an automatic microcontroller for our clutch but just for now just to test this thing make sure it actually works i'm guessing it does and then we'll connect this straight to our clutch right there and then we're actually going to customize this microcontroller so we'll put this at probably like 18 and then we'll put it at four for zero. And then we're going to use air to fuel ratio because I like that better. Then all that should work. And then we're going to start this up, spawn it in, start it with our key button. Now it idles at a lower RPS, so it uses less fuel. And then if we throttle up all the way to one, okay, it's a little bit louder. We engage our clutch here and it does drive. Oh my gosh, this thing um, definitely pops way too much of a wheelie. I'm not a fan of that at all. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. But yeah, it can pick up some speed. Um, this thing definitely needs some more stability on it, of course, obviously. But it does run, which is a good sign. So let's bring this to workbench and kind of fix this stability issue. I'm just kind of confused on how that is even an issue, even though that front actually floats a little bit higher. But I mean, I guess that could be an issue. So we're just going to grab some more weight blocks, I guess, and fill the bottom of this thing. And this is a backup measure I'm going to be using here. Um, but we're actually going to be adding some stuff here. I'll show you in a second. So let's grab ourselves some robotic pivots. And then we'll put these really close to our center of mass. So something like right here. Okay, we'll put it right here. Grab some of those. And we'll just fill up this entire area right here with like eight of them. And why don't we actually make another row? We'll make another row down the middle because why not? That'll help even better. But this will help us float better. Or at least it should. It'll, it'll definitely make us float higher. Okay, so watch the difference. Yep, this thing just just bounces right now look how much higher it actually floats with that um it definitely floats a little bit towards the front here but I, I don't know why it actually leans towards the back when we actually start driving though that's just really weird to me it's just definitely popping way too much of a wheelie um i like it at a front angle like going up but not at an angle like this this is definitely way too much i think we're gonna have to put more weight down here so why don't we make a, another one row of this and i don't know if this is gonna help at all but we're gonna see here it just lowers our center of mass and does or really should help stuff out here and then we'll spawn it in again hopefully this works i really we can still see my exhaust dude this thing puts out way too much exhaust i don't like how it spawns in and it floats kind of weird like this it just looks a little bit off so i realize why it could be doing that it could be because our um actual center of thrust is too low so oh gosh i really don't like that when that's the issue um what we're gonna do here is just test some stuff so I'll grab a um pipe like this um actually before we do that we're gonna save this just in case i mess something up and then instead of the propeller being down there we're gonna put it right here so that's definitely going to do some um 
um, interesting stuff here, guys. Um, it's closer to our center of mass, so it shouldn't actually pitch us up. But we're going to see here. That might be the issue. I really don't like when that's the issue. But we'll just have to really try lowering our center of mass. I don't know how we'll do that, but we're going to see here. All right, so what's going on here? It's floating a little bit interesting, but that's normal. All right, let's throttle this thing up. Get to full throttle, engage the clutch to 70, and that'll work. And, oh, yeah, that's definitely the issue, guys. That is not an issue we want. Um, Okay, that's kind of... I don't know what we should exactly do about that. Maybe we could add, like, control fins on the front of this thing to try evening it out. Okay, we're going to see here. This is going to be a pretty interesting test. Okay, we'll add some fins, like, about right here, and then um, I think that's all we need. So we'll put two sets because this is, like, a really major lean to the back. Then we'll grab our ourselves an additional throttle right here okay so i've never thought i'd be grabbing an additional one but here it is the minimum value will be negative one max value will be one and then we'll connect those straight to these fins down here and then hopefully with that throttle we can actually control it and see how um control how far it actually pitches upwards so let's go ahead and start this thing so start it up full throttle 60 percent clutch and then what does this do is it if we hold it down wait hold on that actually works um but it brings this thing down way too far in the water so we just need to have this thing float higher but then if we bring this thing down it'll make us go a little bit high here oh my gosh this is insane okay well i guess that's something we can do to this boat we can have it be at um a pretty insane angle here but it is a pretty good boat i guess um that's on full throttle let's drop the clutch a little bit more nope we want it higher i can definitely get this thing faster we will make it faster i just have to do some stability customization to this thing clearly because it floats quite interestingly but at least we did kind of find a fix for that and then what I did is I added two control fins on the front and back. Uh, we already had the ones on the front, but it, when it spawns in, it'll actually even it out quite slowly there. So that does work out pretty good. We just need this thing to float higher. So probably get rid of some weight blocks here. So we got rid of that top row we just added. I hope that actually does help here. Um, we want it to float pretty near the red. So I mean, that is close. It's still floating towards the front. So we need to add some more weight in the back. That'll work. We'll start it up, do one more test run, but that will probably be it for the video. Once we're done testing this, so we'll put it at like 60% here, put it um, decently far down so just like that and yeah so this thing does float pretty good but i do still want a little bit of the red sticking out of the water actually a decent amount of it it's just definitely floating way too low here there we go i did add some more control fins so now it's floating a little bit higher on the red still want it to float maybe a little bit higher but that's probably going to be it for this video um we still need to add like an active stabilizer to this thing i think we are going to add that we definitely have way too much space down here but make sure you guys let me know in the comments right now what we should add to this thing next i know you guys have some pretty good ideas but that's me for this video make sure you guys like it subscribe hit that bell thanks for watching and goodbye